So let us go ahead and start in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And Heavenly Father, we once again thank you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We ask you to send your Spirit down upon us so that we may continue to grow in our love and knowledge and service to you. We ask you to open our hearts to hear the message you want us to hear, to continue to grow in our spirituality, to continue to grow, recognizing your presence here with us everywhere we are. We pray for all of those who are suffering. We pray for those who are still suffering from the cold snap last week, those that are still without water. Uh, we pray for the homeless always. Uh, we pray for those that are suffering from the pandemic uh, in all the different ways. And we just ask you to continue to guide and watch over us, especially in this season of Lent. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, so welcome, everybody, to our SSJU uh, we've got planned some topics here during Lent for the SSJU. Uh, we have tonight's session here on Ignatian spirituality, uh, but a uh, little commercial. I invite you to join us uh, next week. We'll be talking about the First Saturday uh, devotion, uh, the communal First Saturday devotion. Uh, the following week, we have an interesting guest, a priest uh, from the Melkite Catholic Church. It is, uh, it is a church that is part of the Roman Catholic Church. It is, they, the Melkite Catholic Church uh, recognizes uh, Pope Francis as the Pope. They are united with us uh, in that way, but they, they are what we call Eastern Rite. So their, their practices, they're all are, are, uh, uh, like, similar to the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church is the part that broke away the Melkite are part of the Eastern Rite churches, which are the Eastern churches that didn't break away. So a real interesting topic there. We'll, we'll skip uh, spring break, and then uh, the week after spring break, um, we'll have, uh, we'll, we'll gather together on a Thursday night for, uh, for a rosary uh, sponsored by the uh, Knights of Columbus and uh, the uh, Cross Catholic Outreach. We're, we're partnering with Cross Catholic Outreach this Lent on a project called Box of Joy, uh, where we will box up uh, various items and uh, every family will be invited to uh, box up a group of items and we'll send those items uh, to a diocese in Guatemala, the Diocese of Suchi. So more information about that, but, uh, and also about the rosary that we'll have on Thursday night. So just plan on joining us uh, each of the Thursday nights over the next a uh, few weeks. Uh, second commercial, uh, this, uh, this talk here is on Ignatian spirituality. And if you want to practice uh, some Ignatian spirituality, uh, we'll have a retreat uh, that's available to you to uh, uh, start up next Monday. It's uh, what I call a busy person's retreat. Um, it's a retreat you do just a little bit of reflection each day. Um, we'll talk about the reflection that you're going to do, the, our topics today of the exam and prayer and meditation and contemplation are the uh, reflections that you'll do on a, on a daily basis in this retreat. Uh, during the second week of the retreat, when you're somewhere about the midpoint of the retreat, uh, you'll have the opportunity to meet with the spiritual director. You'll do that virtually. We'll have a sign up for you to do that. And, uh, the retreat is, is you know, expected to last about three weeks long, uh, but every person kind of builds their own retreat out of here. We'll have material out on the web uh, for you to uh, do the reflection. So um, we hope that you'll, you'll, you'll join us on this retreat, uh, join us doing uh, these daily reflections. I'll talk more about that uh, at, the, at the end of this presentation. Uh, when we talk a little bit about the kinds of reflections and things we're doing. So with those advertisements, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so we are talking about Ignatian spirituality, specifically three components of it, 
the examined prayer, meditation, and contemplation. So uh, we've talked a lot about St. Ignatius. Uh, last January, uh, we had a lot of information uh, out about uh, St. Ignatius right before the COVID pandemic hit. But uh, uh, just to kind of review a little bit, St. Saint, Saint Ignatius uh, was a soldier. He was, a, he was an engineer, really. He, and uh, he was recovering from a wound on the battlefield. His leg had been shattered by a cannonball. And he was recovering in his sister's house, um, recovering from the wound. And St. Ignatius loved to read romantic novels. And he need, loved to fantasize about romantic stories, uh, stories of romance, of chivalry. And, uh, but unfortunately, his sister didn't have anything for him to read. Uh, the only thing, didn't have any romantic novels for him to read. The only thing she had for him to read was a book on the life of Christ and a book on the saints. And he started realizing that when he read those books and he started fantasizing about the life of the saints and the life of Christ, that there was something different in those fantasies and the fantasies that he did that he had when he was fantasizing on the romance novels and fantasizing about his romantic life and all. When he started realizing that when he would fantasize about romantic things, he, uh, he had a certain joy while he was fantasizing about it. But once he stopped fantasizing, he would just get this kind of dead feeling. It was just, eh, you know, but when he, but when he, fantasized about the life of a saint or the life of Christ. And he, he kind of put himself into that life of the saint and how he would live like that life of the saint. He realized that he would experience this, this certain joy, a, a different kind of joy, a gratifying joy. And that, that after he, he stopped fantasizing, that, that, that gratifying joy, that, that sense of peace, that sense of, of comfort, right, would, would all would all dis uh, would, would continue. It wouldn't disappear. It would continue on, and so he recognized that there was this real difference um, in in the way when he fantasized on on things about the saints and the lives of the saints uh, that was different from his romantic fantasies. And and what Saint Ignatius started doing was he started realizing that 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 as he reflected on his life and reflected on on how God was calling him and reflected on, on living that life of the saints and all, that, 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 that God was really talking to him through his feelings. And, and so he went off and he started reflecting on that as he recovered and he, he started getting closer to God. And eventually he developed a 30-day uh, a retreat called the Spiritual Exercises. And it's a retreat centered around uh, fantasizing, reading scriptures, fantasizing on the scriptures, uh, talking with God, reflecting on God, reflecting in prayer, and, 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 and then recognizing the feelings you have as a result of those reflections. And, and from those feelings, recognizing that, 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 that God is talking to you, that uh, uh, God sends the Holy Spirit down upon us and and when we feel a sense of peace in our lives, that's that's a sign that that that, that the Holy Spirit is with us, and and that God is kind of moving us in that direction. And so he developed a whole series of exercises to to contemplate about the presence of God, and to contemplate and discern how God is calling for you to to live your life, and all based on recognizing how these these feelings are. And I love Ignatian spirituality because it's very practical. Uh, as I said, Saint Ignatius was a was a soldier, was an engineer, and 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 for those you know the kind of that that mindset, he he lays out very clearly you know how you can think about these feelings, think about this is going on. You know, spirituality is about emotions and feelings and can be very esoteric. But he puts some, some very practical exercises, some very practical things that you can do around it 
uh, that that helps you to get into that spirituality and and uh, you know coming from that mathematical engineering kind of background I just I just love his his spirituality um, and so it's a spirituality for everyone right it's a spirituality that that that, that spans the gamut that, that that allows you to enter into deep reflection uh, if if that's where your your spirituality is into into the mysteries of God but it's also one that if you're just getting started helps you to to, to walk along the path before going uh, really deep. And we're going to talk about three components of the, of the Ignatian spirituality that, 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 that really brings you into touch with, with God's presence in your life, how God is directing you, where God is with you. Um, the other big component of the Ignatian spirituality is the the discernment of spirits. Uh, uh, last year, we, we we talked some about that uh, discernment of spirits. We'll talk more about that uh, at other times. But right now, here in this season of Lent, we're concentrating on the part of Ignatian spirituality that that really lets you reflect on on where you are in your life and 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 where God is 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 calling you. So we're going to talk about the examined prayer. And then two forms of reading scripture and praying over scripture, uh, meditation and contemplation. And so uh, we'll talk about what uh, St. Ignatius has to say about all three of those topics. These are the three elements that make up that busy person retreat that I had the advertisement for what we're calling the scrutiny examine retreat. Uh, during that retreat, we'll uh, suggest and recommend that you practice uh, these three spiritual practices. So, uh, so let's start off by talking about the examine prayer. Uh, we actually ran this retreat back in 2017, and uh, uh, I talked a lot about the examine prayer uh, during that time, and and and. A number of people got confused because when I used the word prayer, they thought I was talking about something like the the Our Father or the Hail Mary or a Rosary or the Divine Mercy Chaplet. You know that it would be this this set prayer that you you say that I'd give them a, a sheet and it would just have a a prayer that you would read. Uh, it's not that kind of prayer. It's a it's a reflection. Uh, what we will give you with the examine prayer is some some questions and uh, with the retreat they'll come out on a page where you can do some some journaling where you can write down your answers to the questions. The questions lead you on a reflection on God's presence in our lives. It, it leads you into looking at where God is in your life, how, how God is acting in your life to to look over the past day or the the past few hours or a few last moments and see see where God is in your life, both both the good things and the bad things, right? Times where you've where you've pushed God away through sin, and times where you've seen His blessing, you've seen uh, the need for Him to be there to be there with you, and that's what the examine prayer uh, is all about. So why why is it good? for us to pray the examine prayer? Why is it good for us to recognize God's presence here in our life, to see where God is here in our life? Well, the theological reason is because God is present here. That's what our faith tells us, is that God is present and active in our life. He's present and active in everything that we do. You know, that's that's kind of what makes us as Christians differ from other faiths and religions is because we do believe in the incarnation. We do believe that, that God so desired to be present with us that he even actually took on our form and came down from heaven and became man like us, that Jesus Christ walked the earth with us. And we believe that, that when Christ left, he sent the Holy Spirit he gave us the sacraments. He gave us the Eucharist. He gave us these ways in which he 
continue to be present here. And so we believe that God is present, that God is present in a very real way in every moment of our life, that God is there with us, journeying with us, constantly present. And so it's good to pray the examine prayer to recognize that presence, to recognize that God is around you. From a practical sense, why is it good to pray the examine prayer? Well, because it can become a central element of a vibrant spiritual life that um, I have found as I have practiced more and more of the examine prayer, uh, a, a real increase in the spirituality and the recognition, you know, that, that knowing that God is present there with you, that even in good times and in bad, you know, and even when I'm in desolation and it's hard to see that presence going through these habits of looking at him and examining it brings me into this fuller, richer uh, spirituality. And so praying the examined prayer on a daily basis uh, is really a, a, a great way to, to make that connection, to make that recognition of God's presence in your life. And the beautiful thing about the examined prayer is that uh, you can pray it in, in, in the quiet of your home, um, uh, I do recommend doing that. You know, I, it's, it's the way I start my day every day uh, with a few moments of, of quiet prayer, praying the examine prayer. But the examine prayer is a prayer that you can pray throughout your busy life. Um, you can pray it while you're waiting in lines at the grocery store. This picture was obviously pre-COVID since the people don't have any masks on. But uh, you know, it, just when you're waiting in a line, when you're in traffic, when you're commuting, uh, pause and stop different times during the day. St. Ignatius actually suggested that you pray the examined prayer three or four times a day, not just once a day, but it, just stop at various moments in your life and, and just reconnect with that presence of God in, in your life to see where you're doing, how you're going about, what, what things that you need to forgive and how you need to be forgiven. So it's a it's an easy prayer that you can stop and just spend a few moments, do kind of a gut check, I like to say, just where am I? Or you can stop and spend a few minutes really reflecting on your previous day and where God is present in there. To pray the examined prayer, there's really essentially five steps uh, to the prayer. Um, you start out by just giving thanksgiving and praise to God. Uh, you know, that's the way, that's the way St. Ignatius starts everything, right? He recognizes everything is for the glory of God. Everything is about praising God. And so always when we start to pray, we, we, we start that by giving thanks and praise to God, recognizing the glory of God in our life to recognizing that that everything we do every every moment of the day is about giving glory to God. And so that's the way the examined prayer starts. It's by giving that thanksgiving and praise to God. By answering the question, what am I grateful for today? This is the question that'll be on the journal sheet in the retreats. Pause for a moment, maybe jot down some thoughts, you know, specifically. What is it that I'm grateful for today? What are those things or for yesterday or the last 24 hours or the last three hours or four hours or whatever from the last time that you did this? What are those specific things that you're grateful for? The second step is you make a petition for the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to come down and enlighten you. And this is really, you know, a preparation to, to take yourself out of the busy world, right? Even, even when you're standing in the midst of the busy world, even when you're standing in that grocery line, or you're in the middle of that commute, you just, you just call on the Holy Spirit to, to take you out of the busyness, out of that to-do list, and, and just to be there to, to lead you in prayer. And so, during the uh, retreat, we'll be asking the question, 
Am I ready to let go of the busyness of my daily to-do list and let the Holy Spirit lead my prayer? That's what it's about, is just putting yourself there in the midst, in the hands of the Holy Spirit. So that's the first two steps, to give thanksgiving and praise and then to make petition for the Holy Spirit. The third step is really the body of the examined prayer. And this is where you do actually review the presence of God in your daily life. There are a lot of ways that you can do this review. And in fact, we'll have uh, out on the website, uh, it'll point to an app that you can download called Reimagining Examine. Uh, you can search for it in your uh, Apple Store, or your Google Store, um, re Reimagining Examine. And it, and it gives you a, a, a bunch of different series of, of, of ways that you can do this, this body of the examined prayer, uh, things that you can contemplate to, to kind of review your day. Uh, th this is one of them where you, where you ask yourself, um, what was the most unfree moment of the day and what was the most free moment of the day? That, that unfree moment of the day is, you know, when was it that I was in a really bad mood? Or, or when did I let my strong negative emotions control my thoughts and actions? You know, there may be some days where that was your whole day, you know, all the moments in the day, right? And, it, and it's good to stop and, and recognize that, to recognize those, those unfree moments, to recognize those moments that you were in a bad mood. But it's also good to recognize those free moments of the day, those, those moments when you were in a good mood, um, when you did, uh, when you were the most faithful, hopeful, and the loving side of me, run the show. It, it, those, those are the kind of questions. You know, this is really what's different about the examined prayer from an examination of conscience. We all kind of know the examination of conscience where we, we, we look over a list of questions about our sins, about our, our, our sins of commission, and, uh, and, and reflect on the things that we've done wrong. The, the examined prayer encourages us not to just look at the, at the wrong side, at the bad side, but to also look at the good side. Yeah, you know, I was mentioning that uh, last night I had uh, uh, heard confessions uh, over at St. Anthony's at their communal uh, penance service. And uh, a lot of the people, a lot of them were, were confirmation students. But you know, with the students and the adults, I, I, I saw kind of two trends that uh, seem to be happening more and more, uh, particularly at those kind of big penance services. One side, um, people get too complacent about their sins. You know, it's like, well, yeah, maybe I lied, but doesn't everybody lie? Well, yeah, I guess I disobeyed my parents, but doesn't everybody do that? You know, I really don't have any big sins. I really don't have any sins, you know, because I, you know, I just haven't done it. I haven't done anything major. I haven't killed anyone. But then there's also the side where, where people become too scrupulous, where they become too afraid of their sins. They become too afraid that, that, that God is going to condemn them to hell. And, and they worry too much that, you know, the only reason why they're good is because God is, is going to condemn them. And they don't really see God's love in their life. They don't really have that balance. Both those extremes are, are, are bad. We've got to find that happy medium. We've got to find that, that, that happy medium where we, where we reflect on our sins, where we, where we don't become complacent about our sins. But on the other hand, we recognize that our sins don't define us. Our, our sins aren't all that it's about. What it's about is the love of God. What it's about is his mercy. What it's about is his blessings working in our lives. And that's why I like the examine prayer. And that's what this body, that's what this step three is about. It's about looking at your life and looking at both 
the good and the bad. Step four, we concentrate on that contrition. We concentrate on, you know, who you might need to forgive, right? Not only where you need forgiveness, but where you might need to forgive others, right? Where are the people that, that hurt you today? And, you know, what are those that your grudges that you're carrying, those, those things, family members, co-workers, you know, who is it that you need to forgive today? Uh, anything, large, small, you know, just where's that little irritation? And then, of course, what are those thoughts and actions that you need forgiveness from, you know, to, to be specific about that, to, to be specific where, where it is that you have sinned. Again, just anything large or small. And finally, is this prayerful resolution. The final step, and this is really the, the important step here in the examined prayer. So now you've examined your life, but so what? Well, so what, right? What, what changes? What things should I do differently? What have I learned from my experiences today? What have I learned about my interactions? What have I learned about the way I, I, I interacted with people, about my good moods, about my bad moods? So, about the things and and where do I need to call on the Holy Spirit uh, to help me? Where we're looking forward to the next day, you know? Where is it that I recognize I'm really going to need uh, the Holy Spirit's help? And, and 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 what can I learn about both myself and about God that I can take in tomorrow? That I can I can take God with me when I go forward tomorrow. And so that is, that is, in essence, the examine prayer. And I encourage you, whether you uh, participate in our retreat or, or not, to uh, uh, you know, make a, a habit here, especially during Lent, of stopping each day and doing this ex examine prayer. So now let's talk about reading scriptures and uh, St. Ignatius has kind of two methods for reading scriptures, one that he calls meditation and the other that he calls contemplation. And he, he, he has sort of his own definition. He puts his own sort of twist. We've, we, we've heard of these words, meditation and contemplation before, uh, but, but, but St. Ignatius has his kind of own unique definitions to those words, uh, sort of unique, some the same. And that, that we'll talk about, but so so don't be confused by it. When Saint Ignatius uses the words meditation and contemplation, he, he means a particular form of prayer as you read the scripture. And he separates these into two different forms of prayer. Uh, but in reality, when we sit down and read scriptures, we we kind of do a combination. You know, it's not like we sit down, we say, okay, I'm going to do meditation today. Tomorrow you'll sit down and say, okay, I'm going to do contemplation today. Maybe one or the other will, will kind of drive your prayer, uh, will be the central part of your prayer. But uh, you, you might find in your prayer components to both. Uh, you know, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, just kind of, kind of go with it. I'll give you some instructions here on, on how to do meditation and contemplation. But you know, in all of these things that St. Ignatius has, he, he gives us kind of a, a methodology, but, but he expects the spirit to be the one that actually drives our prayers. And so it's not as this formula where you do boom, 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 and that's the way it is. You know, he recognizes that in prayer, the, the Holy Spirit will take us where he wants, and we ought to be free. We ought to allow the Holy Spirit uh, to take us. And so while I'm making a distinction here between meditation and contemplation, in reality, the, the distinction gets blurred. So what is meditation? Meditation is a reflective approach to reading the scriptures. And it's really where you kind of put yourself outside of the scripture. This is normally the way we read scriptures, right? You know, we listen to it. We try to interpret the words. Okay, you know, what is that? passage of scripture trying to tell me. We look at it from, from the outside. 
Contemplation, on the other hand, is an imaginative approach. It's where we look at the passage of Scripture from the inside. We put ourselves right into the Scripture passage. We, we become a character in the Scripture passage. We, we are there standing there with Jesus and the gospel in dialogue. As Jesus talks, we're, we're there standing next to him. We're there with the apostles. We're there with the woman at the well. We're there with the man born blind. We're, we're there in that scene. And, and so we'll talk a little bit about how both to do meditation and to do contemplation. Meditation, I tend to do on, on shorter verses, on, on just like a single verse. Not uh, Contemplation is better to do on a longer passage, on a whole story that uh, comes up uh, from, the, from the gospel. As I talk about uh, both meditation and later contemplation, I'll be uh, sharing examples that uh, Father Gallagher uh, gives in his book on meditation and contemplation uh, from some of his discussions with some of his spiritual directees and you know how they explained and described their own personal experiences uh, with uh, meditation and contemplation. Here in meditation, uh, this is uh, based on a discussion that Father Gallagher had uh, with a, a directee named Mark. But so let's look at kind of the three-step method for doing meditation. The first thing is to call to mind the truth with love, right? That means basically just reading the text. So here we're reflecting on this text from John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. I will lay down my life for the sheep. So that was the text that Mark was reflecting on, meditating on. And so the first step, right, would be to just read the text, right? That they just call to mind, just see what it says. And then we ponder it. I love that word ponder. You know, in St. Luke's Gospel, in most translations of St. Luke's Gospel, it, it talks about Mary pondering, Mary pondering there when the uh, uh, when, when Zechariah tells her uh, ab about her, her son. And uh, uh, that, that word in Greek, that word ponder uh, can also be translated, uh, stitch together. And, and, and that's really what ponder means, to, 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 to stitch together. So, so when we read a, a verse out of the gospel, when we read a verse like this about where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, we, we, we take it, we stitch together with everything else that we know about Jesus. We, we stitch it together in a, in a new way. You know, we've all read this passage before, I am the good shepherd, but we take it and we, we stitch it again once more on kind of our whole basic understanding of Jesus and who Jesus is and, 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 and where it is, and, and we reflect on it anew, we ponder it, we stitch it together with all of our understanding. So Mark, when he reflected on it, he reflects with affectionate wonder on Jesus as the good shepherd who, who accompanies him, who leads him, who eases his fears. And this is what he, he reflects on. This is what he ponders as he, as he reflects on that text. And then we embrace it. We embrace it with love and desire. You know, what is it? What is it that, that Jesus is trying to tell us? What is it that's there in these words? And and, and, and how do I embrace that? Mark, as he embraced it, right, he, he feels this deep sense of Christ, of, of loving awe, and his heart welcomes the good shepherd who, who eases his fears and leads him. And, you know, this is what, as he reflects on this passage, he gets this new sense. You can see how this reflection brings him into this closer personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I mean, that is, that is really what all of the Ignatian spiritual exercises are about. 
And that's that's what his his method here of meditating, particularly meditating on the Gospels, is about. It's about bringing us into that conversion in Christ, to, to read those words, the Gospels and the letters, the epistles, to even apply this into the Old Testament, since everything in the Old Testament ultimately points to and foreshadows Christ. And the whole point there is, is to bring you into that deeper, deeper relationship with Christ. And so we do that through meditation. But when I really started developing a deep personal relationship with Christ, it was through St. Ignatius' contemplation. When I first heard about St. Ignatius' contemplation, when I, 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 uh, uh, I immediately assumed I, I, had, I had heard about contemplation, uh, struggled contemplating. Uh, normally, when we hear that word contemplation, we, uh, we think of uh, kind of what St. John the Cross means about contemplation, where it's this, this kind of deep, esoteric understanding of the mysteries. And uh, I've always kind of un struggled with how to do contemplation and I've gotten better with it. Uh, uh, hope to, to do more things talking about that St. John of the Cross form of contemplation, certainly a deep spiritual place to go. But St. Ignatius, when he talks about contemplation, it's, it's a much more practical contemplation, uh, certainly a much easier contemplation to, to, to enter into. Um, you know, as I said, he, in St. Ignatius' contemplation, He's, he's talking about this imaginative approach of, of entering into the, uh, the passage, of taking the, the story and putting yourself in the center of the story. Uh, here, uh, in this example that I have, uh, Father Gallagher was talking to a directee named Catherine, and she was talking about her experience of contemplating in the uh, verses of the gospel, of John's gospel, where he talks about uh, Jesus' encounter with Pilate, right? Uh, it, it is as his, it, at his sentencing. And so the first thing we do is we contemplate on a scripture is that we see the persons. We see the persons that are in the story, and we place ourselves among those persons. Uh, sometimes replacing one of those persons. Uh, one of my favorite contemplations is uh, is the woman at the well in from John's Gospel, and and I often place myself in place of the woman there, and and you know see myself in that person. So so we see ourselves standing there in the story, see ourselves among the people in there. Uh, Catherine says. I saw Jesus standing before Pontius Pilate and his accusers. And then we begin to hear the words. We begin to hear what is said. This is one of the reasons why I love contemplating on John's gospel is because John's gospel is filled with dialogue. It's filled with Jesus talking to someone. And it's great there to start hearing Jesus's words as we contemplate there as if he's He's talking to us as he's talking to me directly, as, as, as if I'm there, part of the crowd that he's speaking to. Here, Catherine talks about her contemplation, and she says, I began to hear Jesus saying quietly to the crowd, yes, take me, do what you want with me, for my death will be your salvation. This is what she's imagining him saying to her right there at that moment as she enters in, as she contemplates on this gospel passage. And then we observe the actions. We observe what's going on around there. And this is where Catherine says that as she contemplated on it, she saw Jesus dragged off by those who wanted him dead. And so in this contemplation, we enter into the story. We enter in to the persons, the words, and the actions. And then we actually allow ourselves to participate in the events. 
this is where the real prayer comes in as we as we back away from the from the readings of the scriptures and we and and we imagine ourselves there in the story and imagine ourselves there in in dialogue with Jesus there listening to Jesus listening to it and let our imagination work with us and and in that we become aware of our feelings and our desires this is this is what Catherine did she she participated personally in the events and in the moment of terror she felt as his final walk through Jerusalem began was, was excruciating. She, she felt that excruciating. She recognized that excruciating pain. And she says that she prayed, holding that terror in her heart, desiring to comfort Jesus, you know, that as she reflected on this, she had that desire to, to go out and to comfort Jesus. And she was led there to, she was told by Jesus, uh, and she, she told Jesus, I, I would not leave him alone. And, and so I stayed there. She stayed there, keeping watch, entering there into that personal relationship with Jesus, recognizing personally what he suffered, personally what he went through, and just staying there for a moment with him there in that agony, uniting our agony, uniting our suffering with his. This is the way we do contemplation. And through this and through these feelings, we, we let God talk to us. What, what are we understanding? What are we learning as we contemplate here on these uh, passages? Well, at first, when I first heard about contemplation, I was a little bit, uh, a little bit nervous, a little bit kind of put off by it. Um, I, I was on an eight-day Ignatian retreat, and and they kind of reviewed this idea of contemplation and sent us out multiple times during a day to to contemplate on various passages. And you know, I would sit there and I'd start to imagine myself in the passage, and you know, I kind of started feeling funny to me. It's like, well, okay, am I just making up things? You know, am I just making up my own story? I mean wait a minute, there's a gospel story here. And, you know, shouldn't I be reflecting? Shouldn't I be reading a commentary and trying to understand these gospel passages? But no, I'm just sitting here making things up and, you know, going along with it. But, you know, what I, what I discovered as I, as I continued to do that, at first with apprehension, I started recognizing the spirit working in my life. I started recognizing the spirit working there, the spirit bringing me into that closer relationship with Jesus. I, I started experiencing Jesus saying things to me that, that weren't just my imagination making it up, that I could, I could tell it was the, the spirit working in me. It was the spirit talking to me. It was the spirit there with me. There are, there are many saints that have found God through this imaginative contemplation. It, it wasn't just something St. Ignatius made up. And it certainly is things that uh, saints since St. Ignatius, have, through his spiritual exercises and through other ways, have, have continued to use and growing in their spirituality, their, their holiness. You know, Besides St. Ignatius, St. Teresa of Avila uh, used a lot of imagination uh, in, in her writings, in her reflections on scripture, St. Francis de Sales. There's many of the saints that, that use this imaginative contemplation, imagining themselves there and, and praying with Christ in this imaginative way. But, you know, when you look at scripture itself, scripture itself is imaginative literature. Scripture itself is novel. Scripture itself, most of the books of Scripture, both Old Testament and New Testament, are uh, uh, are stories, stories that you that you're drawn into, that you put yourself into. That that it's 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 perfectly natural to be there. Whether it be, you know, the Old Testament story of Moses or David or Joseph or or that. And most especially the, the the New Testament stories, the Gospels, uh, where they are, and even 
even the, the, the letters of Paul, as I went on the, uh, as I went on the, the pilgrimage a couple of years ago, uh, with my uh, classmates, uh, as I went on the pilgrimage in the footsteps of Paul, I, I can now even read those with this imagination, uh, contemplation. I can I can picture Paul there writing it, and I can picture his audience reading it, and and so Scripture itself draws you into this imaginative contemplation, and, and sometimes it even it, it it's very intentional that it's it's trying to guide our imagination. I mean it's. It's, it's clear now, as I read Mark's gospel, as I reread Mark's gospel, how Mark wanted to draw his audience into the gospel. Uh, one of the things, I, I did a, a talk about Mark's gospel uh, a few weeks ago, and one of the new understandings I have about Mark's gospel is that often in, in Mark's gospel, Mark will use, uh, in the same sentence, both past tense and present tense. Now, sometimes the translators try to clean up those tenses and present to us uh, things that are all in the past tense because, you know, well, that was bad grammar. He's using past and present tense all in the, the same sentence. But, you know, when you really read that original and when the uh, translators allow it, sometimes they, they present us both that past tense and present tense. What's happening to us even subconsciously, is it's drawing us into the story. That's 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 clearly what that's clearly what Mark wanted his audience to do is to be drawn into that story. To that he's not just telling a historical story, but he's telling a story that is present with you right now. That 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 historical story, that things that Jesus is saying, things that Peter is doing. They're, they're, they're things we stumble with. They're things we do right now. And if as we read Mark's gospel, if we put ourselves into Peter's shoes or put ourselves even as a bystander there with Peter and Jesus, and we, we recognize, you know, our own stumblings, we recognize our own difficulties and, and how Jesus is there, always faithful, always present with us, always present to bring us up. So, this this contemplation, this imaginative contemplation, is really very natural, very natural for us to read the Gospels especially, but to read all of the Old Testament uh, in this way. So how do we go about reading scriptures? How do we go about doing this meditation and, and contemplation? Well, so before the prayer even begins, the first thing we got to do is set aside a time and place for prayer. So this is, yeah, meant to be done in the quiet place, right? This isn't meant to be done, uh, you know, in that in the grocery line, right? It, give yourself a, a good time and a good place, uh, especially if you're joining us on this retreat. You know, schedule a time each day that you can. Uh, stop and pause and 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 go through some of the meditations, the the contemplations. Go through the examined prayer. Uh, set a place, a quiet place, a quiet place. You know, maybe uh, with some uh, religious artifacts, uh, crucifix, a picture, something there that can help you along in your your prayer life, or just the comfort of your big chair, right? But just have that place where you can go off and meditate and contemplate. Uh, St. Ignatius also suggests that before you start meditating and contemplating, uh, to, to read a, a commentary on the scriptures, to, to read a commentary on the passage, to get some new insight, some different insight. And this is where there's a lot of wonderful new commentaries out uh, on all of the Gospels, uh, Bishop Barron has put out from his Word on Fire uh, his own version of the Bible that's just packed full of commentaries and and uh, uh, commentaries that, that he's written, commentaries from the fathers of the church that he includes. Uh, I, I've been reading Mark's Gospel using his uh, 
his his gospel, his Bible, uh, with with all of these commentaries. It's just a wonderful read. Uh, Paul Hahn has out a whole series of scriptures uh, uh, through his um, Emmaus Publishing now uh, has a great commentary. You can get a commentary for each of the books of the Gospels. So get a good commentary if you can. And and just, you know, before you read a passage or before you read that, maybe just read a review a little bit in the commentary. Don't have to do it all the time. Not, not for every passage that you read, you have to run off to a commentary, but at times, it is helpful that before you start the reflection uh, to review it in a commentary. So then you begin the prayer. You begin the prayer by, again, ensuring that you're in a nice, quiet space. The TV's turned off. The radio's turned off. The, uh, you're, you're just there in this quiet place that you can be with, with, with God. And then you get yourself prepared both physically and emotionally, right? You just, you just open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. You just open yourself up. You get ready both physically and emotionally uh, for the prayer. And then St. Ignatius suggests that you start with a prep preparatory prayer. That you always start with a prayer to pray for the grace of God that, that all your intentions, all your actions, all your operations be ordered purely in the service and praise of the divine majesty. I mean, that is what that is what St. Ignatius is all about, right? That everything we do, everything we're about is for the greater glory of God. And that's so important, so true, especially in prayer. And so he suggests that we start with a little preparatory prayer where we just ask God to give us that grace that, that all of our intentions, actions, operations just be for no other purpose, for no other thing that's just totally in service of giving praise to God. And then we read the scriptures. And some of you may be familiar with Lectio Divina, right? The way of reading the scriptures. And I, I apply Lectio Divina uh, to, uh, to my reading of the scriptures with the, the St. Ignatius format in the, the, with the meditation and contemplation. Uh, uh, not all the time, uh, but most of the time. Uh, Lectio Divina suggests that you do three readings of the, uh, of the passage. Uh, the first one they call Lectio, which is just kind of a straight reading of the passage. And then the, the second one called Meditatio or Meditation, right? Which is this beginning of this reflecting on it, right? It, it, but here in this second reading where I do, when I, when I reflect, right? When I'm doing it in the St. Ignatius way, this is where I start doing it in that contemplation, right? especially if it's a long passage. Sometimes I'll do it on the meditation way, which is just to keep outside of it, particularly if it's a short passage. But I'll start trying to enter into the passage as I read it. And then as I go through this third time, I start looking more and more at my response to the readings. I, I start looking more and more as I read it this third time to, to where I am in the readings or what I'm learning from it, what I'm reflecting on. And after you read these things, and as you read these things, this is when you start entering into prayer with your reading. And, and, and the first thing you've got to do is, is to, to ask God for a grace. You know, what is it that you wish and desire about this? Now, in the retreat, uh, we will give you some short passages, some single verse, couple of verse passages uh, that you can meditate upon. And with each of those passages that we give you, we'll suggest a grace for the passage, something to, to, to try to get out of the passage, some grace to pray for as you reflect on the passage, some, some change in your life. Uh, some change there, it's some grace that you want God, some conversion that you want as you reflect uh, on this, on the passage. Sometimes as you read the passage, something will hit you and you'll be, 
uh, inspired with that with that grace, and you'll have a specific grace that you're inspired with as you read the passage. Sometimes maybe there isn't a specific grace that you're looking for. Sometimes you you just need help in in looking at the prayer and and trying to glean something from it, and it's just open. But you know, as you read through this passage and as you start to uh, meditate or and or contemplate on the message, you want to be aware of that grace, that grace that you're asking God as you get out of the passage. And then you spend some time actually praying over the scripture, right? So you've read it, maybe read it a few times, and now you just sit back and you pray over the scripture. Meditative, you, you use that reflective approach. You know, what is what is this passage saying to me? What does this passage mean to me? You know, sometimes you, you do it in contemplation. You, you imagine yourself there in the passage. And you imagine yourself there with Jesus. And, you know, you, you listen to the words that Jesus had said. And maybe he's saying, speaking other words to you. And you just put yourself into that contemplation. Sometimes you do both, right? A lot of times I will. Uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll enter into contemplation on a long passage, but there will be some particular thing that, 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 that Jesus says, and I'll want to reflect more deeply on that passage. Well, what did he mean by that? What is, what is the understanding? I'll bring myself kind of out of the context and, you know, uh, just try to reflect on what does that mean when Jesus says, I am a good shepherd? What, 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 what does that mean? He, even if I'm in the contemplation, right, I'll bring myself out of it. This is the body of the meditation and contemplation. This is where we, we stop and we, we ponder and we reflect and we see our feelings there. As we spend some time after we've read the, the, the passage, uh, as we spend some time praying over it, meditating, and contemplating over the passage. And then finally, we, we, we end with what uh, St. Ignatius calls a collo collo colloquy, colloquy, colloquy. And uh, this is where, this is kind of this, this final talk to Christ, this final talk to God. In fact, uh, St. Ignatius uh, recommends the triple colloquy uh, that, that you allow your heart first to speak to Mary. And, and, you know, where is Mary bringing you? What in your reflections and what you reflected on, what you've contemplated, what you've meditated upon, to bring that to Mary and to talk to Mary about that, and then to bring it and talk to Jesus about it. And let Mary help you to refine what you're thinking about and bring that refined product to Jesus and, and to talk to him about what you've reflected on, what you've meditated upon, what you think, the, the kind of the aha moments, the, the, the things that you've gotten out of the passage. And again, you let Jesus help you to refine that and you take that all to God the Father. It's there that you sit with God the Father and sit there in the presence of God the Father and you and you recognize where God is calling you, where, where God is wanting you. What is it that God wants you to get out of this passage? Where does he want you to go from this passage? And, and, and you just sit, sit there and you spend some moments with it. And then finally, you end with an Our Father. So, you know, time-wise, as I've gone through this, you know, how much time are we talking about? Well, it depends, right? It depends on how much time you have. You can do it as quickly as in 15 minutes. You can spend an hour. You can spend more in there. And so, you know, it's up to you to kind of see what's the right amount of time that you have in your schedule uh, to enter into this. Uh, you know, maybe you don't have enough time uh, to, to read over the uh, scripture passage uh, three times, right? So maybe you just read it over once and, and then enter into a meditation and contemplation, or uh, maybe you do read it all three times. 
how how much time do you spend in meditation, contemplation? You know, 10 to 20 minutes is usually good, but maybe you don't have that much time. Uh, maybe you only have five minutes. Maybe you have more time and you can spend uh, 30 or 40 minutes in meditation and contemplation. You know, this is where you need to kind of try and see how God is speaking to you, how the Holy Spirit is moving to you. Uh, the, the colloquy, usually about 10 minutes spend in, in praying there and, you know, taking this to Mary and Jesus and God, and then ending with the, with the Our Father. What I'm suggesting during this retreat is that you, is that you try these meditations and contemplations and, and then doing the exam in prayer, and you look at kind of a different schedule and different times, and you try it and, and try it for about a week or so, and then schedule some time with a spiritual director and talk about your experience and talk about how God was talking to you. Talk about what you've learned through these reflections and kind of get an idea of what that time is. And then to, they will help you to, you know, how you can then grow and improve, you know, on that. So we will have out on the website, uh, the, uh, uh, some, some verses for you to meditate and contemplate on. We'll have a journal for you to uh, uh, do as you do the examine prayer. So we'll have resources for you to, uh, for all of these items here on the uh, uh, examine prayer, the meditation, and the contemplation. So um, I hope that you uh, join us on the retreat. Uh, we are uh, recording this video, so you may be watching at this video at any time. Uh, I'm recording it here as we begin uh, Lent, uh, but you may be listening to this video during the summer. Uh, we will leave the resources for the retreat out on the website. Uh, you don't have to do the retreat uh, during uh, just this period here during Lent. Uh, you can do it at all times. Uh, I, in fact, I encourage you uh, not to just do it for the three weeks, but to pick it up and to continue it on and to make it a regular part of your prayer habit or a regular part of your sessions. You can come back and review this video or maybe watch it. Maybe you're watching it for the first time uh, during those periods. We'll have the resources available so that you can practice the examine prayer or practice meditation and contemplation to start practicing some of this Ignatian spirituality. So, um, I pray for all of you. I pray that you have a, a good Lent. Uh, I pray that you are able to uh, uh, start using some of these resources of the Ignatian spirituality uh, to move into a, a deeper relationship with Christ. So I will uh, I'll stop sharing my uh, video and uh, open a uh, open you up to uh, open up to any uh, questions and answers. If you want to uh, unmute yourself, if you want to turn on your uh, video camera, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm open to any, any questions that you might have, any clarifications, uh, anything that you might want to uh, want to discuss here. Father? Yes. This is Laura Davis. Yes, Laura. Uh, you, met you mentioned the uh, commentaries by uh, Scott Hahn. Um, what do you think of the commentaries that uh, are in the um, book we use as lectors? Oh, those are very good commentaries. Yes, that's a that's a great source, right? Uh, uh, th those those uh, those are good commentaries, and that's and they're short and they're you know applicable to that that week's reading. So. Uh, yes, I highly recommend those. Any other thoughts, questions that people have, comments people want to make? Um, yeah, Father, this is Mary. Um, a lot of us are doing uh, the year in the, the Bible in a year with Father Mike Schmidt. And I, I really feel like I'm doing a lot of this. I get a lot out of his actual reading and then he we pray he prays 
that gives us a lot more insight into those passages. Isn't that kind of Ignatius or one of these ways of doing it too? Uh, yeah. So, so, I mean, I would see a lot of what he's doing is, is kind of that commentary thing. Uh, you know, if you want to add some reflection then on the passage, I would suggest that after you listen to the podcast, you know, maybe turn it off and spend some time either in meditation or contemplation on the passage that, that he's just read. But yeah, his comments are, are kind of from his own uh, reflection. I mean, you know, where he comes from, I've, I've started listening to his uh, passages and, and, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's pro providing his own insights from his own meditation on it. So they're, they're very good, right? And they, and they bring you in, into a, to a thing. So uh, yeah, I, I, I highly recommend uh, doing his Bible cast a year. I'm way behind. I, I don't forget what day I'm on. And I keep falling farther and farther behind because I'm not doing it every day. But uh, hopefully, hopefully some point I'll be able to uh, catch up on it. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, if, if, if you want to practice the Ignatian meditation and contemplation, I would suggest that after you listen to that, that you, uh, uh, you know, turn off the cast list, you know, kind of, and reflect on what he said, right? So pondering that, read, reread the passages that he's just read, and to ponder it, or to go into a contemplation where you put yourself into that Bible's passage. Thank you. Other uh, other thoughts or questions? Well, I thank everybody for uh, for for joining us here today. Um, and it's it's been it's it's great. Hopefully, you've you've gotten something out of it. Uh, keep checking the website. We'll have up uh, on the website more information about the retreat, and uh, we'll also have uh, this uh, the recording of this. Uh, published in there. So uh, let us let us end in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank Go you, in peace. Father. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.